Man, the first time that um, I met Michael Jackson um, was really cool performing with him. To this day, you know, I look back at it and I really, really hate that I bumped into Michael Jackson on the stage when I was freestyling. I remember that, dude. I don't want to bring it up. <laughs> That's I know, sorry. That's That's I was going to even ask a question because I could, I could tell that night. I was like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Big Boy's Big Neighborhood, boy. beautiful day in the neighborhood, what? ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure to have this man back in the neighborhood, man. Usher is in the neighborhood. Usher, welcome back to the neighborhood, brother. Hey, man, happy to be home, man. Man, thank you, brother. Yeah, yeah. Man, Usher, when, you are a superstar, bro. And I'm telling you, man, I am a fan yeah. of what you do. Not just your music, but also, Usher, man, what you just bring to the game, what you've been bringing to the game for many years, and what you continue at the highest level to bring to this game, bro. Like, you work too hard. Yeah. So do you. Why? Bro. By the way. But you know I'm what? I'm going to give you your flowers. All right, way, and I'm going to accept them. I'm going to smell them. By the way, through all transitions and also to the idea where radio is gone, you've been consistent. Yeah, and that's man. why we always have each other's back. Bro. Man, I appreciate, I appreciate you, you giving me mine, but I want to make sure you get yours as well. Okay, because, hey, dude, I'm going to take you straight up. When I gave you yours, I was like, dude, he got to give me mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was waiting. Like, if you would have been like, yeah, man, you know, the residency's coming. I would have been like, hold on, man. <laughs> like, bro, your people didn't tell you, like, how, sen how sensitive. I thought you would know this. <laughs> hey, man, but let let's get into just the performance yeah. parts of it, man. Why do you continue to perform the way that you perform, bro? Well, I mean, hey, listen, the, the passion is always going to be there. That's the most important part for me. Mm -hmm. Like, Singing the records, writing the records, creating the records, having the videos. That, that's cool. Yeah. But the performance, the live performance, that's why I really do it. I do it and love it most because of that moment. So I put that much time, that much, you know, kind of like creativity and new thought into that. So I, I'm always trying to shock people. I'm always trying to find something that I could do there that I've never done, you know? Hey, man, and I'm seeing you like you did Dreamville, right? Yep. And it's crazy when you saw the Dreamville lineup. And then when you close that night out, what the audience turned into. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. the audience turned into what whoever was up there, when you got up there, it was thunderous. <laughs> so that shows you, man, that people enjoy yeah. great music and great performances, yeah, man. man. Do you still feel that, Usher, when you're on stage? Absolutely. Shout out to the homie, J. Cole, for yeah, putting man. it on too, man. Two years in a row. Over 140,000 people on that yard for those two days. Just, it was really amazing to be out there and perform with them. I wanted to do the festival for the last, what, three three years? It's been going for three years. So this opportunity gave me a window. And mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? Let me let me do it. I want to I wanna come out. I just want to come out with my band. Yeah, and man. And we got out there. We rocked it, man. I, I, I loved being able to feel that, you know, on that side. I've yeah. done that over here. Right. You know, every year, Lovers and Friends out in Las yeah, Vegas. Yeah, yeah, man. We're going to ask you for people. tickets for it later, but go ahead. <laughs> you always good. No matter, yeah. yo, by the, by the way, don't even ever feel like you need tickets. Just come up. They're going to know you'll be there. Nah, no, I want them from you. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. Hey, 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 I, I know. I know. Is Usher over there? Is that his trainer? Like, <laughs> but no, man, when I see what you give to, a, to us on stage, I'm yeah. like, do you ever, like, if you go into a song mm -hmm. that could be 10, 15, 20, 20 plus, Plus years. Yep. Do you ever think about, man, in this video, I wish I didn't do this? Because when I sit still Kinda. see you do like, it's like a the handstand, I'm the like, hand, oh, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, every night I be like, oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah, hey, man, and you will <laughs> knock out that one hand. And I'm like, oh, my God, <sighs> this dude. <laughs> because I want to tell you, man, nah. I can't. The only thing that I can do from 20 years ago is probably speak. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I don't even usher. I don't do that well. You know what I'm saying? So I couldn't imagine this moment in time. It's you yeah. and Belle Bill DeVoe who I who I feel for the most. Yeah. Because when Belle Bill DeVoe do poison and they got to do that whole. Yeah, but Ronnie never aged. He ain't ever aged. And you have? No, I'm just saying. Exactly. But, but by the way, I'm and then shout out to Michael Bivens. I ain't, I ain't hating. I'm just nah, saying. Not at but, all. but Ronnie, for real, you're right. They get up there. And, and by the way, they, they were and have always been the inspiration behind being that kind of performer. Right. I can remember as a kid, like, making certain that I was following, the, you know, kind of the idea. Loved Bobby Brown, was inspired by him, and then, you know, continued to go on. But it is that. It is that energy that keeps us young. It yeah. is that thing that, you know, that I think is important for the next generation. That's why I was happy to be at Dreamville. Right, right, you know, right. right. Did I'm you know playing... you are going to get that kind of? I didn't. 
Really? I mean, I didn't. Not, and not that you questioned it, yeah, I but didn't. was it no, no. was it more than what you expected? I just, you know, because it's a different audience. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And 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 hip hop and R and B obviously blend together. Right. But that type of performance that's funk and that type of performance that's just me and a mic stand. Yeah. I ain't, I didn't know how they would respond to that, but I knew I was gonna wear their ass out for that. Hell night. yeah, you did. Yeah. Dude, I was at the house and I was like, who man, I dude. Was coming. Like, Make this the last song, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then your last song pretty much in, in, a, in a set is usually yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, dude, I would end it on like a real slow song because yeah. I'd be exhausted. Yeah, and, but you choose to sing, you choose to dance. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and you do an amazing show, bro. Yeah. What do you feel about the state of R and B today? You know, less outlets. You know, like it's it, 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 it's just a weird place. I don't know if it's the outlets or if it's you know kind of the fact that we are moving in a different way. You mm -hmm. know, we we kind of in the consumer aspect of uh, of the business. It's like, what can I buy? What can I see? What can I be involved in? And mm -hmm. R and B hadn't always been a consumer type of genre. Mm -hmm. Hip hop has always been. It's always been about yeah. the Adidas, the hip. You know, like all right. those other things. So you got R &B, this and that. So R and B you know, in some ways has to grow in that space. That's part of the reason I'm doing things like flippers. Right, that's kind of, right. That's part of the reason I'm doing, you know, other kinds of ideas and, and incubating ideas in Las Vegas where people can come have immersive experiences and have something to take away. Hey, man, yeah. what, when you got, when they first approached you for a residency mm -hmm. in Vegas, were you with it? I would, to be perfectly honest with you, no, I wasn't. Why? I was, I was a little reluctant. I felt like, man, it's just so much that I actually want to do. And then I thought of it differently. Me and my manager, um, Ron Lafitte, we were like, yo, you don't have to, this doesn't have to be Vegas in the way that it's been, whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. And we sat down with the right people. We were originally at the Caesars Palace. They were like, you can do whatever you want to do in this space. And I was like, I can do anything I want to do. They were like, yep, anything you want to do. Okay, I want to enter from here. I want to fly from here. Then they were like, do it. That's fine. Let's go. I'm like, okay, great, great. You're like, they were like, they're all losing at the tables anyway. <laughs> <laughs> But but the idea of being able to have that freedom mm -hmm. and kind of reinvigorate my excitement about the creative process, as I told you, it's really about live performance for me. Mm -hmm. So if I get the opportunity to play there, I get the opportunity to try new things and, you know, grow a business because that's the thing with R&B. Everybody thinks that it's about the music. It's not. It's about the business because the business is what's carrying all those other genres. Mm. The business is what's carrying hip hop. The business is carry it carries right. EDM. The business, all those other things. We don't book DJs like we book EDM DJs. We don't book artists in the same way and have the same respect in hip hop as they do in R and B right. because it takes a lot more to carry. For authentic R and B, you got to have a band. Yeah. You got to have backgrounds. You got to have so right. it's a lot to unless there's tours or shows, which is part of the reason that I created. Lovers and friends. Yeah, man. Because that's that opportunity to be able to celebrate R and B and you see that, oh, wait a minute, it's a it's a product just as just as with, well as a with feeling. lovers and friends, do you get anybody that come up to you and they'll feel hurt? Because it's a lot of groups and a yeah. lot of people on lovers and friends. Yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a lot of um um actually uh younger artists. Right. Okay. But because as of right now it's been it feels a little bit more nostalgic, but it's not and it's kind of bookend. Like a lot of, um, like in my, in my set, what I try to do is make certain that I, I bring my family in, but I also, too, bring the youth in, mm -hmm. give them an opportunity. And throughout the years as it grows, because Lovers and Friends is going to continue to grow. Yeah, man. And when it does, I want to create bookends where you got the youth, the younger R&B artists on those stages and having that opportunity. Because that's what it's about, showing that, yo, we are a product, too, and we see each other. Hip-hop naturally does that. Mm -hmm. They click up together. They do things together. They work together. They create open opportunities for each other. R&B artists, we be trying to, like, you ain't taking my fans. You know what I'm saying? It's like, nah. <laughs> yeah, mine, mine, mine. Got nah, you. But if you give that opportunity, it only it, 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 it raises the stakes for uh, what R&B has to offer. And that's really my focus, trying to figure out how to make certain that it's a product. When when you do something like a Dreamville or you do a Lovers and Friends, mm -hmm. are you excited about, can you still hear the crowd? Uh, I wear in-ears. So yeah. most of the time, oh, they, okay. yeah, so they most of the time, they have to mic the audience so that I can hear them. But otherwise, oh. if you see me like pull one out, I'm really trying to hear him, or I'm just going deaf. But I'm right. just saying, <laughs> right. it's, like, it's, it's like it's it's a lot. But I, I that connection and that that ability to hear seventy thousand people singing a song, man, that is. Psh. It, do you have rituals before you get on stage? Any rituals or superstitions? Do you have to tap something? Well, or? At, at at Lovers and Friends Festival, right. dude, I'm trying to get to every stage. Just sad because I'm like. 
you got a show, man. And I'm like, I want to see everybody. So, oh, so you I show go see, up and look. I want to go see Chris. I want to go see Mar- Mariah. I want to go see uh, uh, Christina Aguilera. Yeah. I want to go see Missy. And it's like, I mean, it ain't happened yet. But last year, dude, I was over side of the stage with, you know, uh, Khalees. I was on the other side of the stage with... Uh, 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 Keith Sweat, mm. Jodeci was out there. So, so you're like, a fan. Yeah, I'm a fan of R&B in a real way, man. Really, those. And, yeah. But I, I think also being a fan of music, being yeah. a fan of R&B and growing up yeah. and having these idols as well, I think that's what helps you or helps others to understand what what you give into an audience because you you've been and you're in the audience. Yeah. So you know how to put on a show because you know what kind of show you want to see. The product and environment of R&B is like nothing that you've ever experienced because of the soul of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we can get we can jump around and have a good time and whatever you choose to do or select to do out in the audience, you know, whatever y'all want to be into, but yo, the soulfulness and the the intimacy and the and the emotion that comes with R&B, it can't be replaced. Is there a song that you lo- love to perform live? All of them. Yeah, there it is. It's trying to pick a kid. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Which one of my babies do I love the most? (laughs) Yeah. No, but I love Burn. I love... Oh, yeah. uh, I love Climax. Climax is like a heart piece for me. You know what I'm saying? Um... I love performing now, Glue. That's the new one. Oh, that's Natalia's song, too. Don't <laughs> let her on stage with you. Let me find out. Don't let her on stage with you. Hey, man, and when we were talking about just the, the residency and that, that experience, people make yeah. that an event. Mm-hmm. People come, they celebrate birthday parties yeah. there. They celebrate, you know. Girls uh, weekend. Gr- yeah. yeah. And so when you announced, right. <laughs> a couple people wi- got married in the audience. My oh, wife and I, it was yeah. like, you know, we went to go Proposals, see you. One yeah. of our first like international getaways mm-hmm. was when you did Puerto Rico, HBO. Ooh. And that was the first time, you know, me and Veto, we were just, you know, young couple filling yeah. each other out. And we went to Puerto Rico. So our glue with you is we have so many real memories. Hey. So when you did the residency and, you know, we we followed you around other places but mm-hmm. when you did the residency it was us yeah we were like dude we are going to that <laughs> and then covid hit a little bit so i think it was the, the december run and people yeah. so we was like oh we're not gonna go this time but it was us yeah then when it came around man we were like dude we going yeah man. her birthday she went with her friend liz yeah <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we had we had waited on that concert, uh, oh, on that residency since the yeah. announcement, oh, and that was like our plan. And she was like, "Oh yeah, Liz and I are going to go," and I'm like, "Okay." And so then, uh, call and get us tickets. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I had to therapy sit session, ladies and oh, gentlemen. That's, it, yo, you, you it. that's exactly what it is, bro. And I was like, "Well, baby, we can go see it again." So then, no, you're seeing it again. Yeah. I'm seeing it for the first time. <laughs> so, and then she was like, oh, they had a, certain, a personal request too. The, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. And then she request when we went back, she requested songs from Usher that wasn't in the show. Yeah. Aww. yeah. And so then when he would, when, when you went into, uh, uh, throwback, throwback, yeah. Throwback wasn't in the show. Yeah. And then when he went into it, we were like, oh, he did it for us. Oh. Yeah, man. Like she was, she was like, "Oh, that's not in the show." She was like, "Damn." Yeah. He was like, "This motherfucker." You know what I'm saying? Like, All right. He was like, "Big." I wish you would have just came with your homie. Like how she came with her homegirl the last time. <laughs> yeah, man. But that was cold, Jack. Yeah. And she was like, "No, the show's a little different tonight." I'm like, "No, it's not. Yeah. It is different, but don't do that to me." You know what I'm saying? So that's one memory that I hold. That really bothers me. Yeah. That really bothers me. So whenever lovers and friends, guess who's going? Me and Jose. Hey! <laughs> yeah. Me and Jose, no matter how bad she wanna go. Me and Jose. Not, not her. Uh-uh. How, how's everything going? How's fatherhood for you, bro? Fatherhood is harder than it's ever been with teenagers. <laughs> oh yeah. how, how old are the the teenage the older the older ones? It's now? actually not hard. It's just but it's different. Back is what it's it different. Is. How old are they now? 14 and 15. Yeah, see, yeah, my, so mine that, are 14 and 16. Yeah, that personal identity when them nuts drop, you're like, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Boys, too, by yeah, the way. Yeah, man. So it's like, all right, you know what I'm saying? Like, part of it is, you know, all parents feel this. You know, they, they want their kids to have the opportunities that they didn't have. Right. And you see something that you're like, yo, you got to really, really get into this. And, you know, I sometimes beat myself up like, man, did I have I made it a little bit too easy? Right. Because I've That's worked so hard ask. and made it, made it work. But... They found their way 
And me and my son had an incredible co- connection over the last three days. And he's like, I'm not you. And I'm like, his name you, is Usher. He's like, but I'm not you. You're like, you damn right you're not. I'm no. me. Really? He's like, yeah. And I well, wanted, How do you take that? I mean, I, t- I take it as him really taking ownership of mm-hmm. who and what he is. Like, you talk about being focused and doing these things. I don't do it just like that. I do it in a different way. But I'm just as effective. And I hear what you're saying, and I understand. And I'm going to do it. But I want to do it. My, my way. way. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, you, so you like, like, you can't even say my uh, way because I own it. <laughs> right. yeah. you remember, you talking to you. You. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I gave you a mighty name. <laughs> hey, man, is it hard to have a name like Usher? It, it could be. Because you don't see anybody else's kid Mm-mm. named Usher. Like, you don't be in somewhere and be like, oh, this is my son, well, you know, see, Dominique, this is Nancy, and this is Usher. I'd be like, Usher. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, but oddly, I, I, I thought of that with all of my kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, Navid. I don't mm-hmm. see any Navid. Navid, yeah. I don't see any Sires, Sire Castrello. I don't see, that's his middle name. I don't yeah. see any Sovereigns. Damn, so, that is true. Yeah, so that's. Those some hard-ass names to spell, too. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, good So Lord. keep it simple, Savi, Sire, see, Nav, Ush. See, I have a Jade and well, Jade. He don't even want to be called Ush. He's like Cinco. I'm really? Ni- he's like, yeah, call me Nichols, Lil Nickel. Really? And why Nichols? Yeah, that's that's his. That's that's part him. Of his that's him being me. That's, that's him being him. What do they do? What do the older ones do? Basketball. Like, what, do you, what do you feel like they're Usher's into? Usher's into basketball and sports. Naveed is into you know he's a thespian. He loves to act. He loves to sing. He loves to dance. He loves yeah. you know all different types is of that music. Scary? It that, isn't because he's actually a marketing genius. Mm. Ush Bucks came from Naveed. With when like it from was his club, idea from was, the. It was completely his idea. He so when you go it. to the red, no, he wasn't at the club. No, he no, wasn't no. out at the strip club. <laughs> no, just, just, that's, that's not right. what I meant. You talking about the marketing, right? <laughs> yeah. So he's but he has the one, genius ideas. The Ush Bucks. Yeah, he's like. Remember when the girl yeah. was like, "Yeah," and the Ush Bucks. We were like, yeah. uh, "Everybody knew that those were fake." Honey. Yeah. Like, what are you, what are you talking it. about? Like, but thank you because everybody knows that I have a residency. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey man, so he came with Ush Bucks. Yeah, he came with a really brilliant idea. He's like, "Yo, Dad, what if you did like you know your face on dollars and 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 because Las Vegas is money." Why not? I was like, that's a really cool idea, man. Yeah, man. All right, cool. Did you pay him for that? You were well, like, you owe me. He's getting paid. What nah. do you mean? You know how hard it is to be able to do any of things? Come on, man. Yeah, I would have been like, you owe me. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just going to take that over. Room and board. That, you got it, over with, with. You got it, kid. Man, how do you balance being dad um, and being, you know, everything that we want? Being, you know, Usher the performer. Um, I th- Man, there's just not enough time in every day, but mm-hmm. I give every bit of what I can. And, you know, it starts off with them on my mind. Mm-hmm. I remember that I'm doing it for them uh, and I want to make them proud. I want to be an example. But these days are beginning to teach me a little bit something different. Like, yo, your kids are not going to be you. And somebody needs to hear this right now if you're listening. Like, yo, your kids are not you. And part of the reason that we are holding on so tight, maybe so aggressive with our kids sometimes, it's like, suck it up, sucker. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Figure it out. Get your, so let's go. Nah, you don't need to take that approach. Maybe just slow it down a little bit you will have to be you know the force sometimes but for the most part you know they they are they're learning the same way that you did yeah so be patient with their processes and and if you do have an idea of what you want just think it didn't start there the passion Mm -hmm. did and if they are connected and passionate about something that's all you can ask for and then support it yeah they might change their mind that's fine right but support that and when did your kids know you were famous um, <laughs> it's funny because uh, Usher he obviously has the you know the name but, right. So we're out and he's like everybody's like Usher Usher he's like hey. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, awesome. the innocence of a child. How do they all know my name? Oh, that's cute, man. And then at some point, he get about 80, like, hey, they weren't talking, they were talking to me. about me. They were talking about you? Yeah, yeah, man. At one point, man, I remember LeBron James saying, he, and, and paraphrasing, but he kind of wished he didn't name Bronny LeBron yeah. James. At any point that you think, like, man, I, I kind of wish I didn't name Usher Usher. Yo, by the way, that's such a... a uh, maybe I'll talk about this in a book one day, but the short of it is this. I wasn't raised with my father. Right. So I made that name mean something. And somewhat of the connection between me and my son felt like the connection between me and myself. Mm-hmm. I'm my dad and Usher is me. So I felt like in some way I was kind of reliving it. And I'm like, yo, I want to do this the right way. I'm going to give him my name. I'm going to give my first child my name. And um, But do I regret it? 
Uh, for the fact that he wants to be called Cinco, right? I know that he probably has some, you know, something with it. But I'm like, hey, you know what though? It took, do, do what you want, man. I made it mean something. You make it mean something. Right. You know, my dad didn't give me a reference. My dad didn't give me an idea of what it was to be a man. I had to, I had to conjure it and create it through trial and error. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I'm happy that I named him Usher. Right. Uh, you know, sometimes I want to wring his neck. It's, right. Yeah, but but for the most part, I sure him out the house, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude. But it's like my own little payback at times. You know, it's funny because he's witty too. He's like, yo, I'm like, you so angry and mad. Well, I learned everything from you. Oh no! I'm oh. Like, oh really? Oh, well, that's what we doing, right? <laughs> Man, I hope my son don't say that to me. Oh. I'm not gonna like yeah. oh, oh, that part you learned from me, but yeah, not getting dude. up at three in the morning. Okay, you didn't learn that. Oh, okay, that's, yeah. No, but he gets up every day in in Las Vegas at four in the morning. I'm like, yo, get your butt up. We gotta go. You. What are you getting up at four? Four in the morning for? Well, well actually, because we in Atlanta <laughs> is where he normally goes to school, mm -hmm. but I have them come out with me. And uh, the the, uh, the school that we go through, it, it can, he can do it online. Right. So he has now to get I up early. I just have to tell you, like, man, now I'm on Atlanta time, yeah. Dad. I ain't, <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm not getting up. You know what I'm saying? Like, man. nobody told you to live out here in Vegas. Yeah, he, yeah no. He, yeah, he says it. Hey, man, what's the perks when you have a show in Vegas, man? Do they give yeah. you gambling money? No. I wish. Okay. Okay. Well. No. The, okay. So that's one. Take that off. No nah, gambling money. It, it ain't really Marcus. I mean, you can have them, but obviously you're working. Right. In the event that you start to lose, uh, we know yeah. how that ends up. <laughs> <laughs> we doing shows for free. Forever. Like you owe us eight shows. Yeah. Like man, like you gambled away like ten shows, bro. Yeah, no. Like good lord. What about what about like? Can you call down? Do you live in Vegas now? I live in Vegas. Okay. Yeah. So when you do your residency, do you come mm -hmm. from the house? Or do you come, do you just go to the hotel and take an elevator down? Nah, um, before mm -hmm. um, we always uh, had a had a place down in the city where I just mm -hmm. you know in the hotel go right over to the to the uh, Adobe Live, but uh, we now have a house there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all righty. What's the perks there? Do you eat for free? Everything? No, no, not even like the free. buffet. Yeah, no, I don't eat for free, but I definitely. I mean, but I had that before to be able to get into a places. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But you know, I, there are perks though. You yeah, know, to be able to move in silence, you know, and, and kind of move around. But I mean, if I'm doing my job and actually getting what I need to get done, right. I don't really have a lot of time to hang out and kick it. What I have done is create worlds to be able to have a good time, you know, with with my fans, but also too with my friends. Mm -hmm. So afterwards, we go to uh, um, on the record, which is a um, you know, kind of nightclub and I've, I've created and curated an entire experience where I can go out and hang out oh, so man. we listen to music Brian Michael Cox sometimes comes into this private lounge that I have inside oh, yeah, yeah. of it okay. and we just hang out in the back listen and have a few drinks kick okay, it okay yeah because when I went we didn't do that <clears throat> oh, well you yeah. will next time got you well I probably may not want to go next time okay? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was you know a saying? Wednesday right <laughs> Right. Yeah. we don't do it on Wednesday oh okay there it is yeah <laughs> definitely wasn't there on a Wednesday though Usher but, but I'm not sure you do, are, are you still doing your residency yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we we have more shows to the end of this month. Uh, Lovers and Friends, May 6th. And then I come back June, July, and then I'll be back October. I heard that. Obviously in between working on new music. And yeah, also talk to me ready. about the new music, bro. I'm getting ready to launch my next album. Hey, man, you yeah. did something just live a cappella because you were just feeling the vibe when we went to go see you at your residency. And I don't know what it was. Yeah. But it was this song that you killed. Yeah. And uh, whatever it was, everybody in the audience understood it because you hit it very well what is coming on the the next usher project man i wish i could tell you yeah i wish you could too i can, I can tell you only so much but i know you gotten a piece of it which is glue mm -hmm. and uh me and ellie reed keep oh. thomas uh which is my nr and also two best friends for years we're working on something really really incredible man it's gonna be an amazing piece of uh piece of history in my mind you know, every album, I'm trying to, you know, create something that I think is for that moment. I ain't mm -hmm. really thinking about the past. Right. I am mindful of it, but, you know, want to create something that I feel is connected. And I've been working on this album for some time. The pandemic obviously put a hold in a lot of things. Yeah. And I'm I'm just more methodical in that way and want to make certain that I make a cohesive body of work, visuals, you know what I'm saying, music and all mm -hmm. those things that go together. Um. So by the end of this year, You'll have that album. I, I know you heard so. about my announcement, uh, Rendezvous in Paris. So yeah, this I, right here I may be another that. This might be this might be like a Puerto Rico type moment, dog. Mm. Hey man, and the rendezvous in Paris, is that July September? It's in September. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's that's my birthday time. Come on, dog. Oh, bro, I will have a rendezvous in Paris. Hey. Oh, man, that's gonna be amazing. So what is that? Rendezvous in Paris is my residency in oh, Paris. 
Jesus Christ, yeah. bro. How many ushers do you think you need to satisfy everything? That if you if you really wanted to go <laughs> and do everything, how many ushers would you need? How many? Okay, like, so we talking about the usher board right now? Yeah, if, if you were saying, like, man, okay, Vegas, I want to cover, but then Paris, like, you can only be one body. In one body. In one place. If you were so saying. You can't stay, say stuff like that. I'm thinking church. I'm like, okay, we got ushers in the aisle. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> How many ushers do you need? Like, all right. uh, there you go. Uh, Passing drop, that collection plate around. Drop five like, in there, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, but, uh, like, how many clones do you think you would need? Man. To do all the dates that come to you. None. I'm a one of one and I'm, I heard I'm where I'm at. And, you know, I, I try to, you know, be mindful uh, of, of my kids as well mm -hmm. as my life and also to the ability to enjoy it. It's no, no sense in being able to, you know, go all these places but not be able to experience them. And that's part of the reason that I think this residency concept really works for me because I can go sit places and I can really enjoy it. What's the it. dates on that? Uh, the dates start on the 24th. If you actually go to my Instagram. I'll check it out. Yeah, yeah. My, I go to my Instagram. And uh, it's four dates that we just put up. And, um, yeah, man, it's it, it, that the whole concept and idea is really about bringing the elevated state uh, of what the residency is. As I said, I got an opportunity to really play and do things that I wanted to do in Las Vegas. I'm going to do it again in Paris. Yeah. So it'll be a little bit more fashion. It'll uh -oh. be a little bit more of a conceptual go idea. I'm going to give me a TAM. You gonna get you? I'm gonna give me one of the little them little tans, the little artist has. Oh, yeah, man, I'm wearing Ascot. I'm wearing yeah, I'm wearing Ascot. He's bringing out the cravats. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna bring croquettes and all that, man. Maybe a king. Croissants, all that, man. <laughs> Believe that. A baguette. Hey, man. So going into you say the new album, we can hear that possibly, or or we hit at the end of the year. Yeah, you hear. What it. happens in 2024 with Confessions, the album being 20 years old? Um, that's that's okay. a given. So the twentieth anniversary, we've just started really talking about the concepts around one twenty years of an album. Man, that's crazy. Yeah, man. And you could put on that's a whole adult man. everything on that album mm -hmm. today. So I'm not certain of exactly what we're gonna do, but there's gonna be a lot of incredible activations next year on it. Um. It's just about at the place of selling 20 million albums. So any event that we can do an activation that tips it over that line, right. I think that'll be really cool. And historically, it'll be the only album that has only R and B album that has ever done it in history. So I love to be able to try and make that history. Um, up until this date, it's the only album that has sold over 10 million albums. So um, I'm really really excited in this generation of course right. michael jackson all this totally different thing. but um you know i'm 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 really excited about 20 years next year it's gonna be really amazing yeah man and what's yeah. crazy about that man is that not oh you still here but you still here and still doing what you do just like it was yesteryear yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I, when I saw that, I was like, and that, that's why it tripped me out that you say you bring a new music too, mm -hmm. because you could have really just like, man, I could do these for this. You know, I got my residencies. I do, do, do this. And then next year is just a given year, you know? So the idea again is trying to find new ways to introduce what you've done to a new audience. Mm. And again, this opportunity to do a residency gives me that uh, gives me that chance to sit somewhere. One is just easier because you're not carrying all of that production, right. <laughs> and people and people can now come in and really make a plan. They can decide where they want to stay. You know, have a dining experience, mm -hmm. maybe fall in love for the first time, maybe go meet somebody. You know, what I'm saying for the first time. But it is really intended to allow not only me to enjoy the space, but for you to enjoy the space. If you come to Paris around the 24th, 27th. 25th, oh, sorry, 25th, 24th, 25th, 27th, 28th. All right. If you guys get a chance to come in and have that experience, it's going to be like something you've never experienced ever. If you come to Las Vegas, I can say the same thing, and right. you can attest to it. Oh, yeah. Because the whole purpose and point is to make certain people yeah. feel connected. Like, yo, go out with your girls. Have a good time at you know on the record. Got you next time. Yeah, go uh -huh. out. <laughs> have dinner. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Enjoy Las Vegas and 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 and. and 
take that moment in. You know, don't just feel like it's just a rush. Okay, he's here today, gone tomorrow. No. It felt, man, that residency, it felt like family. Yeah. Everybody was dancing with each other. You yeah. you you looked around. And then when you left out, you just left out in a great mood. Yeah. And there was nothing where I was like, oh, he didn't perform such and such or he didn't sound right. Like, I walked out of there like, dude, he killed that. Yeah. Then I looked at Vera, I was like, yeah, you seen it twice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just coming back to that. Hey, Usher, have you ever been tired of the music business? Tired of the music business? Yeah. I'm tired of the music business thinking that it has to stay the same mm -hmm. in order to thrive when the entire business is continuing to grow. There's so much that has happened and grown. You know, I don't look at and feel the same way that people do. I don't look at the glass half empty. I look mm -hmm. at it half full. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about what's going to happen. I'm thinking about new business, new ideas, and ways to elevate it. I don't think about R&B in a negative state or people to say that. Nah, I did at one point, right? right? But I'm right. like, no, there's something new um, and there's a new opportunity. I don't get tired of it. I don't get tired of what I'm doing. I never felt like I was completely going to walk away. I felt yeah. discouraged at times. Right. Yes, yeah. I was like, yo, I do feel like maybe the standards are being placed here because people feel like this genre of music doesn't, you know, it doesn't react or it doesn't get the same reaction as other genres, but it can't be compared. You know, the emotion that is inside of these songs, the time and the connection, the ability to have space in songs and think and feel, R&B has supplied us so much. And if we really, really want a deep, how deeper connection to something else, I think that that has been in it. I think that R&B has been the spinoff of all of those genres. They just, in some way, are forgetting it. I think mm -hmm. of hip-hop, yeah, it was sampling. It's always been about sampling or being inspired by R&B music. Yeah, so I see that soul. as an extension of R&B. But R&B actually mm -hmm. just needs, it needs, a, it needs, a, it needs an outfit. Right. It needs a thing. It needs something that you think about and say, well, I love R&B, but I also too love these glasses. I love this juice. I love this new technology. I love this, you know, to think of, R&B in that way. That's what I'm pioneering. That's where I'm at. That's where my focus is. When I think about, you know, the business that is New York, that is hip hop, that is all those other things. R&B is going to do the same thing in my mind. And I'm kind of, you know, saying it now because I want it to happen. Right. But, but I'm working on it in real time. Did you have to not, did you have to learn that? Because <laughs> being that you are such a great artist, bro. I've been at, around a lot of incredible businessmen. And you, did you get, and, but you had to get, you know, and not me putting something on, but you had to get frustrated yeah. at a point with the way, not not the way R&B was going, yeah. but were you ever frustrated the way R&B wasn't getting the looks yeah. and how R&B was starting to either sound or, you know, we we stopped serenading and loving the ladies, you know, yeah. like, and, and then outlets was like, oh, we we rather play than this, you know, were you frustrated? Mm. Maybe a little bit, mm -hmm. because I felt like there's some compromise in the thing that is authentically R&B as we know it. But it became something else right. as a result of mixing, you know, kind of the feels. When you think about, you know, Bone Thugs and Harmony, they created like something new and ideal yeah. around how you bring hip hop and R&B together. Again, the thing <clears throat> that began to kind of adjust all of it is the fact that these other genres like hip hop, they have so many other things that you buy into. Mm -hmm. It's not just about the music. And R&B has always been about the music. In, by the way, an industry where if you come in at a certain rate and a certain, and you don't understand independent business, then you're giving everything away. So you're angry, already mad. Mm -hmm. You're now taking that energy and you're moving it around the world trying to figure out how to get more fans because you want to make more money. If you get more fans' asses in the seats, oh, I make money. That's why I make my money. I might not make money on publishing. I may not make money on the other spaces that I'm giving this creative idea because I signed this contract mm -hmm. and I'm trying to either recoup this money that I've spent or I had this record company spend. But now the industry has changed. Now the industry is given an opportunity for artists to be able to be independent and be able to be businessmen. They don't necessarily have the same, you know, kind of inspiration uh, because now that inspiration is more about, yo, I got to survive and make money off of this right. as opposed to it's really about the art. I want to stay in the studio, you know, and, and work out a dance move or either rehearse the hell out of this song until it's perfected and make certain that I get my voice as great as it can potentially be for this audience. Because it ain't necessarily about that, but R&B has been forced to be there because the, mm. the the players in it 
have not allowed the artist to really share in it. So I'm saying, hey, you can actually build it and let me try to point in a direction to show you guys where we can grow and continue to build R&B where it's more than just about our voice. It's more than just about the serving of a song. It's about trying to figure out how syncs work. It's mm-hmm. about trying to figure out how licensing work. It's about trying yeah, to figure bro. out how to grow other opportunities and grow your business where corporations want to have music and they want to have association with artists and the culture. We, we can open those doors. We now have the ability to do that. You know? Hey, man, you would hear so much, you know, when it comes to verses. Yeah. Chris Brown, Usher verses. Yep. You know, would you would you have done or would you do something like a versus? Yeah, man, me and Chris will kill the world if we ever did something together like that. I'm mm-hmm. not saying it's versus, but right. I will. Uh-huh. I'm going to just say this. If that ever happens... It'll be one of the biggest things that anybody has ever experienced in entertainment Mm -hmm. in celebration of two people who love each other because I love Chris. I don't like him. I don't like his music. I love his music. I love him. He's my little brother, and he's always been there for me, and I've always been there with him through hard ups and down times. I've been there with him. And, um, you know, for us to be able to celebrate what we do together, man, that'll be crazy. I'm going to just leave it there. When you did your tiny desk, right, and when you did Watch This, yeah. Did you know that Watch This was going to become a, <laughs> its own thing? Man, that's crazy. <laughs> but I mean, again, see the industry change. Can you go to this camera and give us a Watch This? Please. Watch This. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey man, that was, <laughs> it became a meme. I'm like, damn, it's so fun to so, do. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah th- th- you know what I'm saying. That tiny desk, by the way, was kind of like a. It was a master class for me. It was an opportunity to just kind of like, yo, let's let's just get in and make it about the music one time. Let's rock out. Love tiny desk. Have been watching so many artists do it, and I was like, I just I want to go there and I want to do something fly like you that. You killed that one yeah. too. Mm-hmm. And that's where there's like there's nothing that you can hide behind. Yeah. When you do a tiny desk. Mm-hmm. You and a mic. Yeah, that's there it. is no explosions, there's no disappearing. Yeah, it's there's no flying around. Here. Yeah. And <laughs> it's just you and your talent. Yeah. And and whoever the support is, you know, but we had uh, Eric Bellinger recently in the neighborhood and he here to watch this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and we call it the tiny desk, watch this. Man. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so when you wake up and you see that, you're like, man. That's what they got from that, aside from a great show. Yeah. But did you feel like, man, you never know what's going to go viral? By the way, so many viral moments out of it, you know, and resurgence of music. Yeah, right? man. You know, if you look at Superstar, Superstar, I got baby singing Superstar <laughs> on there. That's a meme now. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Do you trip off of, do you, for one, do you use the technology of today? You know, as far as like, and I'm talking about the, the Instagram, the TikToks. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I absolutely use it. Absolutely celebrate it. I think that 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 it's a feeder, you know, for then people to investigate and find more. It's like if if I get you if I get your attention, then maybe I'm able to show you something else. Where right. You finally, click on and you go and listen. You're like, oh wow, I like that song, but I like this one and like this one and like that one. Man. Do you ever trip off of what your audience is now too, because the resurgence or how people see something on Instagram, social media? Like, can you look out and see like you weren't even born probably? Yeah. It's shocking. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it's shocking uh, to, to see it. But, I mean, that was happening to us when we was kids. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and now. Yeah, just, you discovered music. Yeah. That you was like, oh, man, I love such and such. And now. No, like, by, by the way, when Jodeci would do a certain song and I'm like, oh, no, nah, I'd be arguing with my mother or whoever it was. Like, oh, this this original. They're like, no, dude, this yeah. is the original. Yeah, uh, hell yeah. You know. I remember one time when when Bobby Brown used to have that Gumby. Yeah. And it was like, he was like, oh, man, I think he went to Quincy Jones and was like, oh, the Gumby. And Quincy was like, I had that Gumby back in the, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it, it all come from somewhere. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you en- you continue to jo- enjoy what you do. Yeah, man. And I, I love to see you do what you do, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I can't wait to see what this new music may sound like. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, it's I know. It's going to be a, a journey. Yeah. Hey, man, did you, when we, we were deep in the pandemic, did you ever catch COVID? Um, I think everybody did. Yeah. I caught some sort of Has version everybody of in here caught COVID already? Yeah. 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 Uh, Damn. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody but me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I caught it twice. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Two time felon. Hello. Yeah. So did you catch it once, twice? I, I know people on threes and fours now. Uh, I think twice. Yeah, man. So yeah. do you, do you shut down? I was completely uh, shut down. Uh, I didn't. I didn't feel crazy though. Right. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't feel like I was getting ready to lose my life. Right. Anything like that. But um, you know, definitely was isolated from my family. Yeah. 
That was the hardest part. I know, man. They literally in the next room, and I feel like I'm a loner in here. Right. Like, Anybody in here? Yeah. Hey, man, I remember doing. I caught it early. Yeah. And so when they would do like all the, oh, the ten days quarantine, I remember I quarantined for seventeen days, bro. Because I didn't. I was like, man, what am I going downstairs yeah, but, and give somebody? Yo, yeah, by the way. I ended up doing that too, and I was like, "I'm gonna just stay in here a little yeah. bit longer." Yeah. <laughs> this feels cool. Hey man, like tenth like day, twentieth day, yeah, thirtieth you, day. You're like, like, come on, I got like, an album. You need to come out. <laughs> yeah, like, oh my god, no, just leave me in here. COVID been gone. Leave me in. <laughs> so when we had, when we were so called deep in the pandemic, <laughs> did you find yourself recording more, or you know, because we didn't know when we were gonna come out and yeah. when we were gonna have. A residency or lovers and friends or a flipper skate party like we didn't know when we were going to be around people okay like that. so that's what ended up happening mm -hmm. right because i'm in atlanta uh, i was here first uh and then we made we actually drove a rv across country would you had done that before would i have done it before i wouldn't have had the time or the, the patience See? yeah to go after it but we did and mm -hmm. when we finally got to atlanta well actually we went all the way to miami and then came back up to atlanta but um you know, the idea of like, yo, wait a minute, I've been skating for years. I just want to go back in and just do it. So went back, went over to Cascade, you know, went went mm -hmm. to, you know, Sparkles and, and and just really began to remind myself of this. I love this passion. And from that passion was like, yo, I want to put this in the show. You know, Jimmy Iovine and, um, you know, DJ, uh, his his cousin, nephew, cousin, he uh, he saw it, and then he introduced me and Liberty Ross. Liberty Ross was already working on Flippers. Flippers is actually uh, a brand that was major uh, in the 80s, mm -hmm. and uh, the creative idea um, was really based off of trying to figure out how to bring or either create an environment where it didn't matter who you were. It didn't matter if you were in the sports industry, if you were in the entertainment industry, if you were actor, you were personality, an engineer, whatever it might be, you could come. And they they said this place was like the Studio 54 of skating. Dope. And that energy, the idea of just being that out here in Los Angeles, it can only last so long. So they eventually shut it down, but she wanted to reopen it. And I'm like, Yo, this is great. I'm actually doing what I do on the stage from a real emotional place because I do feel like we need it. I think that it's really an opportunity for us to, you know, explore our childhoods again mm -hmm. and just really have fun and, and like, hey, man, everybody falls. Everybody's equal in this space. Right. You fall, you get back up, you got to keep rolling. You're listening to music, you're finding the groove. I was nervous for part of people, few people, the flippers I went to. Yeah. Because it was like some bosses out there and I was like, whoa, don't fall. <laughs> yeah, right? Hey, man, when Dre was like, yeah, I think I'm going to skate, I was like, don't skate. <laughs> I saw Jimmy Ivy and I thought like, get off the floor. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, but it, yeah, it's, it's a cool. celebration. And it turns Man. people yep. into that childhood. Like you can't skate nope. and be like this. You cannot. Matter of fact, you're motivated by looking at other people have that much fun. You yeah, just want to join in. And you can see the ones that skate, and then you can see like you know. Oh, that yeah. would be me. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh man. Oh boy. I, I was want to be cool, though. Yeah. I want to be cool. The wiggle. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> That's the hula hoop. <laughs> like yeah, and my boy was like, "Man, you getting skates?" I was like, "Nah, nah. brother." I talked to Jimmy Iv and I said, "I think I'm gonna get out there." He's like, "Well, first thing you should do is just." Get you some skates and roll around your house first. Right. You know, I'm like, ah, he think a liability. He know how frivolous I am. I fall at a flippers event. I'm suing. My neck, my, <laughs> my back. back, my, my crack. Oh. <laughs> Believe that. So, so why? So that was important enough for you to say, man, let's bring this back and let's have yeah. a good time, bro. Let's have a good time and let's let's start building something. But the pandemic, it 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 allowed me to not only go deeper into my creativity, but also to even in, in business. And then our first uh, opening was at um, Rockefeller Center. Oh, wow. Every year, you know, you guys have heard about it. You, everybody goes there and they ice skate mm -hmm. in front of the statue. We're now doing the hotter seasons. You go on quads. You go. You can bring your inline skates. So if you want to, whatever you have. But we roller skate in the summer. They ice skate in the winter. So that was the first, like, major Have out. you ever hurt yourself? Have I ever hurt myself skating? No. Nah. Or what about the residency, nah. right? Because you were I skating fell one through, time. You we, were skating we, through <laughs> stages, and and it's not like regular skate. It's not like you just stand up there like, hey, two stepping, yeah. mm -hmm. like you singing and moving your feet and skating. I'm like, bro, like, dude, yeah. if you fall off this stage Not or something happened, this don't residency that, is don't even put that in the air. Baby. Don't Come put it on, in the man. air, Ani. Sorry, sorry, guys. You know me, man. There, oh she, my God. there she go. <laughs> Yo, like, yeah, man. What you fear will appear. Stop it, Ani. <laughs> No, yeah, nah, but I, I never, I never, um, 
no, nah, I'm never falling like that. And, you know, we, we we take precaution to make certain that we got, like, barriers so you can see. Because it's dark up there. That's the yeah. hardest part, being able to, like, skating in an environment where there's a little light and you got lights over. That's great. But on a stage, I can't see the floor, really, man. Mm-hmm. But nah, but we, you created this show, Usher. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I can't feel sorry for you. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm just saying, I just want you to know oh, okay, how hard it is. I want like you, you to know some... what I go through to make it happen for yeah, you. Yeah, you but know you know what, though? But you put that on you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I mean, you put all these... Pre- I'm about to say, you oh, put yeah. that pressure on you, bro. Yeah, man. You know? Hey, man, if there was a song, is there any song that you wish you really re- would have recorded? Any song I wish I would have recorded? Yeah, um, there's this record, I'm Gonna Love You Better. That's a hook uh, on um, LL Cool J's. yeah. Right, so LL, he sent me the record, and I think Pharrell produced it. And I don't know what was going on at the time, but that's the one song that I have definitely always felt like, man, I really wish that I had cut that record. I remember that you record. Frontin' was another record that I didn't get, but I heard my guy KP. Um, and Pharrell, he, had, you know, he was working on songs at that time. He was working with everybody. But he heard the record and was like, yo, we really want this song. He's like, I give you, you don't have to call, but I can't give you Frontin'. I was like, man, I really damn. Didn't tell you. So you don't have yeah. to call came from fronting in that space. They, they created but, it around the was same it for real? It was for real, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you wanted, for, so you wanted them both. <laughs> yeah. like, I want both of these joints. Yeah. No, he did. Actually, KP did. I, I was still, I was still learning for real. I didn't really know as much um, about nerd the way that he did. Right. And um, it was real. It was man. When I heard that record, I was like, yo, I not only love this, and then I got into the entire his entire catalog, him and Chad, and I was like, yo, man, I just I want to continue to to work with him. He dope. Yeah, is there a favorite, not performance, but is, is there like three favorite Usher songs, not performing wise, that do have you ever been cheesy and be like, Alexa, play Usher? <laughs> I do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and have you had people, But for my kids mostly. Right, right, uh, Alexa, play Usher. <laughs> hey man, and you know what's crazy, man? I remember early on, like there's just some songs and you'd be like, Man, I can't do it to this song and I know uh-huh. this dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause you got you make do it fluid as well. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, man. Usher, shut up, no. Yeah. Alexa, go to the next one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, man. Hold like, on, baby. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, let it play. Like, what do you mean let it play? Like, man, do you ever do you or have you ever made love to Usher music? <laughs> And making them, they have, you, they, they have to come from a place of inspiration, right? Yeah, now. hell yeah, I guess they do. Hey, man, didn't you used to, or do, uh, remember you said, or I heard you record <laughs> naked. I think I, re, I asked uh, Jermaine Dupri no, this. No, no, no. I you, think, I, no, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't perform naked. You can naked. keep it real with us, man. I don't yeah, perform naked. Not that is, perform, I said record in the suspect, studio. By the way, if you, no, me right. and JD don't be in the studio usher naked in the booth. No, <laughs> that ain't happening. We're not even starting that today. Okay. No, I think I may have taken my shirt off and got like super duper comfortable in, okay. in the booth but uh but now not naked but you're not up there doing it like a old d'angelo where you are <laughs> <laughs> oh, naked in the booth yeah. all right I'm usher gonna, what are you doing yeah. Don't i'm worry gonna about punch it. you in from i think that come back in i'm gonna punch you in from there you know <laughs> hey man do you remember recording like the confessions album do you remember that time sadly enough there is no video of us recording that album there's Damn. no video that exists. Me and JD were talking about the other oh. day. Like going back as we think about ideas for 20 years, right? There's no footage. There's no phone. You was we in the moment, huh? But we didn't operate like that back then. Yep. And it wasn't until after Confessions was out that I started asking cameras, my guy, uh, to come around and just film everything. Because you just didn't think about it. It was like, let's be present and being in the moment. We didn't think to have cameras there. Right. You know, and if, and if there's not some person producing it or thinking of it in that way, you just man. That's the, the same way I am about like my radio career. There's certain times like, man, I wish we would have start recording early. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And and at some point, I didn't want to. Yeah, I didn't want to. Now and when you look back, you're like, ah, oh, like when I see Kanye. Have you seen that Kanye yes. West genius? I like they they recorded everything. everything yeah, mm-hmm. like to a, like you recorded that. Like yeah, you, man, they documented everything. Your bro. dental, like everything. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, man. So so I have managed to find some really valuable stuff because I started recording after Confessions right. was gone. So the first, like, the, the launch of the album, I got that. Right, okay. But I don't have the creation in how we came up with these ideas hey, man. and how we were sitting Let in me the tell you what you like, do, bro. Yeah. You pretty much look the same. 
Just tell JD to put like some braided wig on. <laughs> Usher, you look the same, bro. You look the same. I would go in there and just produce some like darkness and like older take camera. it from the top. Yeah, older camera. <laughs> and because, bro, you put a filter look, on it. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Just you look it. the same. <laughs> or you just have like Jermaine at the board with his braids. Just from the back. And then you'll see like you a little bit in the in the glass recording, oh, you know, yeah. like you, Hey man, who's gonna question it? The little kid that's bow wow. Like, like I couldn't do that because when I like my main footage would be five hundred pounds, and then if I came back and was like, oh yeah, they'd be like, no, nah, that's not you, bro, <laughs> <laughs> little boy. Yeah, they'd be like, do you, you see the continuity? I'm sitting up here talking about yeah, it's 1995. They're like, no, it's not. <laughs> like, like big, come on, but but I think you could get away with it. You know, we maybe maybe we shouldn't put this part of the interview out. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hit me back if you if you want us to save this, and then you know I will blackmail you later when the, when the whole documentary <laughs> comes. You know what I'm saying? But but you say you're thinking about writing a book, or, yeah. or you it's, it's in your head. I mean, I thought about many different ways to kind of approach it because being able to sustain a career this long, it does take a very specific you know kind of focus. Mm -hmm. And uh, what that focus is, I would love to offer people. Um, but also too to be able to tell some really incredible funny stories could be fun. Yeah. Uh, you said documentary. I'm actually in the process of working on that. I would love and see. I'm a documentary guy man. about I that. Love it. About that phase. About the the kind of the what was going on in the world at that time. Hey man, you know? do you get scared when you're so popular? Do you get scared of losing that? Losing which part? Just like man, like is there? Is, do you feel like there's always a need? to keep doing what you do because not motivated by fear, but like, ah, like there's a high, you know how people say your first hit, like, man, you, you chase that. I'd be lying to you. If I told you that I don't want to be wanted by the people who've right. always loved and enjoyed my music. Mm -hmm. I do. Understood. Uh, but wanting new fans, new territory, new ideas, new creativity and being current has always taken over that thought. Um, but yeah, I, I, I've always wanted, I, I do it because I want to make certain that you love what I do. Mm -hmm. um, and I and I, I sometimes miss certain moments, but I don't get caught up in the moments of my past. Right, I um, hear you. I look back at, at them to be, in, you know, inspired. But for the most part, like I, sometimes I look at my look at my earlier stuff, I'm like, man, I was crazy. I was going crazy that night, huh? But I don't live in that. <laughs> yeah. I, just, I, I, don't, I don't live there. I, I live in a new idea and being present. Therefore, I get the gift. But I just really want to be as present as I possibly can. And when you say present, and sometimes you move on, then when you get that chance where you start to look back in that rearview mirror, yeah. like, it's not like you want to do a shrine to yourself or yeah. you have a museum. But even... The, I do. The, do. Do you have the blazer, <laughs> the jeans, and the, the see, A hat from like, like a yeah video? That's monetization of the, of the moment, right? So trying to figure out... And and make those moments matter more than anything. That's been a hard thing because you're always trying to create the new. Mm -hmm. But yeah, my mother did a really good job of keeping all that stuff. Oh man! So, At any point, you like, Mama, throw this away. Like I, I tried, and she was like, No, no. Some most of it, she's like, Get this stuff out of my office. I don't want all this stuff. I'm like, Man, this stuff is gonna be good. But then she got it, and she's yeah. like, Oh no! But you know, I got this, and I got this, and I got that. I got Where do you keep like awards? At I don't keep awards. Actually, uh, I don't. Put, I don't really put awards out. Um, I um, my mother's always had that name. Like you don't want to look at your awards. I'm like, no, I don't actually. I appreciate them. Don't get yeah, me wrong. Yeah, but definitely. That don't necessarily represent you know what I feel and and why I'm doing it. Um, because I can remember not having them and how yeah. bad that felt. Right. Working as hard as I did, I'm like, yo, okay, so it's not about the award. Okay, it's about the recognition and about the the fans be, being able to connect with what you're doing. I right, fine. So now that didn't matter to me as much. Any you know. mistakes that you feel like? Um, I mean, hey, man, if you look at it as a mistake, right. then it's a loss. I don't look at anything as gotcha. a loss. I look at it as a lesson. Yeah, lesson and learning. Yeah. You know, are there some things you won't do again? Some because I, I'll tell you one thing. That, uh oh, here we go. And, and this isn't, <laughs> he said, here we go. But this is because I love you. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and maybe this is a conversation that, I, you know, I shouldn't have. And, and it's not deep. Okay. But. When you handed 21 Savage the mic. <laughs> I love 21 Savage. He knew the song, but I was like, damn, Usher. 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, does that trip you out just other genres and how much? I mean, and, and that was a joke for 21. But how many people love what you do and you can hand somebody the mic? And for whatever somebody think about 21 Savage, my man locked in and knew exactly where he was at. So, you know, this right here is why it always works to stay connected to what's going on and what's current. 21 Savage is always singing online. Yes, man. As gangster as yeah. he is, he a stepper. You know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? I didn't seen him. I know that, yo, he he a real one. And but he's also too having a great time. I don't know if it was the pandemic that just opened up, you know, right. just the the fact that he's like, yo, I love R and B. So he like has his R and B playlist yeah, and stuff. Man. He, he literally singing. I was like, ooh, I'm gonna get you. Yeah, and I was like, let me get a mic, sing and, it, and he you know did it. He hey, went man. for it. Hey man, did you ever see where he? It was some basketball game that they was playing, mm -hmm. and I guess they, somebody was playing for money, but they was all in like uniforms and everything, and he was laughing and giddy, and then some dude was trying to like like check him or say something. And he was like, and then when he realized, like, dude was like tripping, he was like, yeah, yeah, man, 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 it takes off all the layers, bro. Yeah, dude. R&B does, yeah, man. man just, you celebrate. There you go. Yeah, you there take you off. And, and you got to think, man, because everybody can come <laughs> back home to soul and R&B. Yeah. You know, and like when you see somebody, like you'll see an award show, and you'll see somebody, and then they pan to the audience, and everybody's standing up because you have these moments, yeah. these connections with mm -hmm. what a particular song did for you. Yeah, like, man. Like a lot of your music to me, is a soundtrack for me. Mm -hmm. You know, we used to have our dance battles off of Caught Up. You know what I'm saying? And I used to kill you. You know, <laughs> my, my dance Hello. battles with Chris. You know, my queen. <laughs> the, like, us early on. Like, you, have, you are a soundtrack yeah. to a lot of people's lives, and you continue to be that. Yeah, man. Who's the soundtrack to Usher? Man, it's a little bit of Teddy. Mm -hmm. A lot of James. Mm -hmm. I listen to James every day. Still, yeah, still I to heard this that. day, I listen to the Gap Band. Mm -hmm. I listen to Earth, Wind, and Fire. I listen to Luther Vandross. I listen to Michael, obviously. I listen to, you know, Al Green. I listen mm -hmm. to Donny Hathaway for his tone. I listen to, you know, um, Anita Baker. Mm -hmm. We all love Anita. You know, I listen to all of these incredible artists and have always loved uh, what they've offered as an entertainer. Bobby Brown, in my mind, was right. always kind of the goal, just because he was just so raw and just tied R&B and hip-hop together. Is there ever a pressure to preserving or being a part of R&B or being a part of, a, of being a performer and the standards that, that you put upon yourself? Um, Yeah, of course, because I realize that I'm carrying that torch. Mm -hmm. I realize, and I own it. I don't mind uh, doing it. I just want to make certain that you know the ones who are coming behind understand how important it is. That's why I don't I don't slack off at all. Yeah, man. While it, and that might be why I am as young as I I look. Yeah. Because I don't stop. I just I keep working and you know just like Kobe and just like LeBron and just like Jordan. You know and and you know their passion they're they're committed and they ain't gonna stop working. They're gonna continue to keep just being great and continuing to learn and. And, and, and better and, and, and hone in on their craft. Big Boy's Big Neighborhood Boy. Usher is up in here, Natalia. Usher, you've had some amazing performances, music videos, you've won awards. But if there's a moment that we know that you could relive again to just to enjoy it since time passes so fast, is there one that you would love to redo again? Um, I mean, there's certain moments that I've had in the in the bedroom that I would love to relive. No, I'm just <laughs> same here. All that is cold in here and all that, man. Like, yeah, man. You know what I'm in saying? I ate salt. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't really me. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's then not you, you. Then you blame it on it's them. Me. Yeah, you blame it on them. It's so good. That's why, you know. You know, am I yeah, you know. But go ahead. Answer. I don't have that problem, Big. Sorry. I know you don't. Neither do I. I was just uh, talking for I people. Yeah, I was talking off this AI chat uh. thing. <laughs> All right. If you, if, yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, Siri, how long does Usher uh, last? <laughs> Ten seconds. Oh, wow. That's great. <laughs> no, go ahead, Omi. Um, man, I think, um, man, the first time that um, I met Michael Jackson uh, was really cool performing with him to this day you know 
I look back at it and I really, really hate that I bumped into Michael Jackson on the stage when I was freestyling. But by the way, you know what I'm saying? I ain't really have all the two. I ain't making no excuses because I actually danced with Michael Jackson. Not everybody right. can say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> nah, but um, that's the one moment I wish yeah. I could I could go back and just to fix it a little I'm bit. Like, Hey, dude, and when you when you did bump into him, I was like, dude, give Michael his stage, man. You know, and he was up there popping and you start moving around. I was like, Usher, man. You're like, yeah, you ain't bad. You ain't nothing. Remember you told him that? Yeah, man. He was like, I'm the bad one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember that, dude. I don't want to bring it up. That's I know, sorry. That's I wasn't bad. going to even ask a question because I, I, could, I could tell that night. I was like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, man. That's the night Michael was all in white, and you was man. You just yo, you had yeah. to do it. Yeah, you had yeah, to do yeah. it, huh? Well, uh, Usher, what do you think of all of Michael the, Jackson? Um... And how you messed up his show that night? No, <laughs> what do you man? Think you of... lucky social media wasn't around then. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh man, they would have been on you, man. What you doing up with the with the legend, man? Go ahead, ask, ask another question because you're ready to get off this. As you <laughs> totally fucked up Michael Jackson's night. Of all of this AI music that's coming out. Oh, of uh, people using artists' voice to create either new songs or having them sing someone else's song. I mean, I think it's it's cool, but it could be dangerous. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a many a many of things that can be spun off of this, and his creative brain over there is probably thinking of something crazy to say. <laughs> right hey now, man, AI you, scares me, bro. It scares mm -hmm. me because it's too. moved so fast just in the last few months mm -hmm. that I'm wondering what does the rest of this year, what is next year like? They got to get something that can. Put a hold on what we're what we're hearing. Mission and in, Mission Impossible yeah. and The Simpsons are always informing us of future things. There it is. You know what I'm saying? Like watch watch the Simpsons be like, I talk, I try Yo, to tell you. Yo, you be like, wait a minute. They I were try just to joking. No, we like we, Donald Trump, the president. Stop. Oh well, what the hell? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Dude, yeah. Ha have you had your AI moment yet? You know, I don't think I've had an AI moment. Man, it's coming. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy, man. That that thing right there is scary to me. It could and be. even now, Usher, like when I heard the Scissor remix with her and Doja Cat, my wife was playing it. She was like, "Oh, they did a remix." I was like, "That's not AI, is it?" I would have never asked that question. Yeah. And now that's a legitimate question that you have to. I ask. heard a Kanye verse to this morning and was like, "Yo, that really sounds." Man, was exactly. was that the Justin Bieber one or was that the, uh, it was the, yo, the Ice Cube one? It was crazy. And yeah, I'm like we heard is, two of them. And we were like, mm -hmm. "That's that's scary, man. That's it, not good. It, it it's cool." But no, it could not. be scary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, man. So yeah. you're not bringing out an AI album, right? Uh-uh. Okay, don't be in the studio just, you know, uh -uh. robbing us. Typing stuff up. <laughs> no, so Typing not... stuff up. So yeah, just... man. <laughs> Make a hit record for um, Usher. <laughs> you know? Do you ever Google yourself? Yeah. Really? I do. What pops up? Usher. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cleverly hit it there, huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you ever Google your net worth? Yeah. Really, though? Is it right or is it wrong? Is it on point? I mean, they got it right a couple of times, but it's changed. Really? Yeah, yeah. Google is now. Yo, I really do hate that Wikipedia does what it does, and it just puts in any kind of information. Like, Bro, the fact that it. my middle name is Terry, it ain't. Right. Um, I am. There ain't no Terry associated with Usher Raymond, the first, second, third, fourth, or fifth. Hey, man, Where I was looking at something to Terry from. I was looking at something, and it was like, uh, I was like, who's Big Boy's wife? And it was like Veronica Alexander. And then it had like a hyphen in the last name. I was like, who? fuck is this <laughs> <laughs> you know but as long as they keeps a lot of the stuff wrong keep them guessing yeah usher definitely want to thank you for coming thank into you. the neighborhood man. man yo you coming out of the palladium yes i will be there yes everybody on come skates on. i don't know i can yeah. get you on skates say what now i can't get you on skates i mean I, dude like the same way I you skate. want me to fall on like the stage i want you to like have a great time. Man. I don't want you. No, I don't, I don't want you to fall because if you fall, then we all fall. Uh -huh. I don't want to go to a show and you hurt yourself. And I'm like, damn, I can't no. even watch the rest of this show no. that I got these free tickets from. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Thank you for coming into Thank the neighborhood, you. bro. It's a pleasure. I can't wait to see everything that's coming. The new music. New music. The, the, uh, glue. Constant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The tours. You know what I'm saying? Like, man. Residencies. I, yes. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. And, and I'm going to tell you straight up. We talked about. Paris. Mm -hmm. At one point, I'm gonna come back and we're gonna close this up, and I'm gonna talk about the experience that I had in Paris because I'm going okay. to that show. 
Woo! It's gonna be a one on one. Yeah, but I'm not taking my wife because the way that she did it when she did it. <laughs> I thought you said lovers and friends is where you would want to take it. You go, you you gonna leave her at home? You know for what, Paris? It's like this, bro. When the somebody, city of love. You ever play like sock ball or anything in school? Somebody pick first. You got second and two. Yeah. I got second and two. <laughs> like, if somebody were to slap you, you wouldn't just slap them back. You just boop, boop, boop. You just keep going. Just keep going. Yeah, so that's what I'm doing. I'm just keep going. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Lovers in French, me and Jose going. And then Paris, it'd be like me and Louis or Arnie or somebody. Aww. Somebody. Yeah. Somebody's going. That's dope. Yeah, believe. And I'm going to tell I'm going to say, even Usher said that's dope. Yeah. That I'm not bringing you. That's cool. There it is, man. And plus, she's going to get there and change your whole show See? around. Yeah, right. You know? Yeah. She, yeah. There it is. Yeah. All right, brother. I love you, man. I, I appreciate you, more, you. Thank you for coming into the neighborhood. Usher in the neighborhood, big boy. <laughs> Neighborhood.